Hey everybody, welcome back. Today I just reinstalled Maya, well I upgraded to the to Maya 2018, so I thought I could uh, take this opportunity to talk through how to set up Maya to uh, the same sort of shape and scale as Unreal Engine, so that there's no you know, hiccups in scale between importing your, your assets from, uh, from Maya into Unreal Engine. So I've got here a brand new, fresh, clean install of Maya 2018, and this will work with any Maya, you can get the student version and, and use that if you like. And uh, so first thing, I guess is just this little, uh, what's new settings here which i never liked so we're gonna uncheck both of these hit okay and then here we are in the my viewport there's a few things that i like to change because i don't necessarily like having all this clutter like some panels here that i just don't use so we can get rid of the helpline don't need that um the animation timeline i like to put over here by the yeah by this other by the slider here and that's about it well there's the uh you double click this we get the tool settings of our uh, basic tools. I'm just going to put this docket over on the left and I also like the outliner being close by. So we put these two together like that. So far so good. And the shelf, which I don't like taking up that much of the space. So let's see if we can, can I put it where I usually have it up here somewhere? Uh, not quite what I expected. You know what? We could just close the shelf. I don't really use it that much anyway. It's handy though. Good to, good to have around. Okay, there we go. So let's uh, get on to the next thing. So let's go Windows. We want settings and preferences, then preferences. And we want to go down to settings. Make sure that our up axis is set to Z or Z if you're in the Northern Hemisphere. This will make sure that we have the, the right sort of orientation for our objects inside Maya in relation to objects inside Unreal Engine. And that's pretty much all we have to do in here. So we'll just hit save on that. One other thing I like to do is if we hit Alt and B, we can change the background color here and see this uh, this gradient background. So if we go back up to Windows, and Settings and Preferences and Color Settings, we can change up these colors to something that's a bit more, you know, a bit, bit more nice to look at. Uh, I think it's, here we go, gradient top, right? It's like a nice sort of pale blue, maybe a little less saturated, like that. And the bottom, I usually like to make a nice sort of soft, soft kind of nice to look at orange, <laughs> maybe a little less saturated than that. Yeah. Very pleasant, very nice to look at. Okay, so we're set here with Maya, so let's hop over to Unreal Engine and uh, let's let's get some stuff we need. So here in Unreal Engine, we don't really need to change anything here, but let's go down to uh, our content browser here, down to view options, make sure that we have show engine content enabled. That way we can see engine content, an engine content folder here on the left-hand side. Also, if you don't see that, you can bring it out with this uh, little button here. And in the engine content folder, let's type in cube, and we'll find this cube here, which we can see when we hover over it, the approximate size is 100 by 100 by 100. So we'll open it up, have a look at here, have a look at it here in relation to the grid. And you can see that it lines up with the grid perfectly. It is a perfect one meter cube that's uh, perfectly sized for, uh, for Unreal Engine's sizing and scaling. So let's right click on that cube. Let's go to Asset Actions and Export. And we'll drop it on the desktop as an FBX file. All these defaults should be good. We'll hit export and let's hop back to Maya. Now back in Maya, we can head up here to file, then import. Uh, we'll head up to the desktop, grab our cube. And we'll have to scroll out a bit so that we can see it because it's going to be quite a bit bigger than, uh, than Maya's own dimensions. In fact, is there two of them? Ah, there's a collision mesh as well. That's okay, we can, we can delete the collision mesh and we'll also head up here to view and then look at selection just so that we, we get to tumble around in the correct sort of fashion. And now we can uh, you know, shape up, shape up our grid. So let's right click on the little grid option here up in your panel, uh, panel bar here, the viewport bar, and hit grid options. And now we can, uh, we can set it up. So if we just head back to Unreal Engine quickly and back in our cube asset, we can sort of get an idea of what the grid here in Unreal Engine sort of is. So what we can see is 10 subdivisions. They're 10 by 10 uh, grid spaces, uh, grid, uh, I guess, sections. So knowing that and knowing that our cube here is 10 by 10, we can organize our grid accordingly. So let's, we'll make our grid a bit bigger. Grid lines every uh, 10. We need a really big grid. Where is that grid at? Oh my God. Yeah, okay, huge grid. Uh, yep, so, oh, I haven't applied yet, oh, totally slipped my mind, there we go, so that's, whoa, 
That is a thousand, <laughs> a, a grid of a thousand. Let's set it back to 100. There we go, here's a grid of 100. Uh, grid lines every 10, subdivisions zero, one even. And there we have a perfectly matched, um, perfectly matched grid that will match the dimensions of Unreal Engine perfectly. You can see it'll snap all, to, all of these lines and everything like that. We have our one, two, three, four, five, three, four, five. Yep, it's 10 by 10, a perfect one meter, uh, one meter cube with the appropriate size and scale for Unreal Engine. One last thing you might notice is if we scroll out, see our models will disappear after a certain distance. So if you're working with big assets, you're gonna to wanna to stop that from happening. So this far left hand icon here, the select camera button, will allow us to, when we hit Control A, to bring up the attribute editor, to manipulate the far clip plane here. If we add a couple more zeros to that, then we can scroll way, way out and we'll never lose our object anywhere in the scene. So that's, uh, that's basically it. It doesn't take long. It's pretty easy, pretty simple. And uh, there's not a lot that you have to do. It's convenient of Unreal Engine or of, of Epic even to include a, a nice one meter cube that we can, we can pull out and uh, have a look at here so that we can get things exactly just right. So I hope this helps you guys. You can get Maya for free with the student license, just as long as you have a working email address. And I highly recommend you do. The only stipulation, I mean, it's the full, the, the full piece of software, but read the license because you're not allowed to make any money off the creations that you make with the student license. Otherwise they come down on you. Consider getting the LT license, the individual single developer license. And uh, yeah, that's it for me guys. I'll catch you in the next video.